morning. How are you? Oh, it's going to be one of the hottest days of the year, I think, today. As the sun would say, phew, what's a scorcher? Most people won't remember that headline. Yeah, 30, 30 degrees, I reckon. Well, in London, anyway, where it's always a couple of degrees hotter. How are you, anyway? All right? Okay, another lovely day in paradise. Come on, let's get with the program. Got to enjoy it, you've got to enjoy it. I'm not a big believer in the afterlife. And uh, if it exists, I don't think it could be much better than this. This is, this is it, you know. Oh, what joy to be alive. So, first of all, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to start off with a rant about my patience. Okay, so if you don't want to hear me ranting about my patience, and if don't, you know, if you've got your own patience and you're like, I can't be having Angry's patience added to my list of nutty patience, then fine. But <coughs> every day the GDC is stuffed full of dentists being held to account for the mental lunacies of the patients that they were unfortunate enough to take on. That is my sincere and sincerely held belief. And I don't, I got, I had so many nutcases in yesterday, I don't even know where to start. If you don't want to listen to this, fast forward to about 10 minutes, halfway through, because I'm going to do a bit on tax and the inland revenue and everything at the end. But, and if I'm still ranting at the 10 minute mark, then fast forward to about two minutes before the end. Because then there's a chance I might have stopped by then. But I've got, I'm going in. I am stressed this morning because I'm going in. You know I'm doing emergency cover for another practice, right? And that is what I agreed to do. I agreed to do emergency cover. However, what's... Because this other practice is shut, because they're relocating, I am getting a bunch of patients in who really just want to get their treatment finished because, for various reasons, they've got deadlines and, and the fact that the surgery is closed is inconvenient to their personal deadlines. So, uh, for example, I'm uh, quarter to nine, I've got to see a 10 year old girl and, uh, who, and the story is that uh, she has got a tooth that's got decay in it. She's had an abscess, had a swollen face, she's been given antibiotics and now her mother wants her to have the tooth out and can't wait the week or so until um, the, the, the practice opens again. So she's bringing her in to me, not for emergency treatment, because she says that the antibiotics have worked, but she basically just doesn't want them to wear off again so that this child gets another abscess. And uh, so she wants to have the, I presume she's been told that she needs to have the extraction done you know, in the window of opportunity while the, the infection's been knocked back a bit by the antibiotics which is fine I mean I understand that I am a parent I understand what why uh, she's pushing for that and wants to have that done and I'm pleased that she thinks that dentists are all interchangeable and it doesn't really matter which dentist takes the tooth out because you know it's all going to get done but as soon as uh, Penny told me that this uh, patient's been booked in I thought to myself this is what a way to start the day what a way to start the day because you don't know it's all gonna go swimmingly, you know? The woman's gonna be upset, she's gonna be cross, she's gonna be embarrassed that her child's got infection and abscesses. She's gonna be uh, confrontational by default because she's gonna want to insist that her will be done. And uh, that's gonna really get me off on the wrong foot because this, I'm doing this on a voluntary basis, you know? I don't have to accept this patient. I can if push comes to shove and it really would have to come to shove just turn around and say no, I'm sorry this will have to wait until Mr. So-and-so gets back to work so um, she needs to be nice to me and I don't know whether she's going to be and I shall try to be nice to her but I don't know whether she's going to be very lovable <laughs> so we're starting off with that stress that and then you know and that's without even going into the problems of getting to know a 10 year old do they like you? Obviously they don't like you because you're going to take the tooth out, you're going to give them an injection. And how the hell the patient's been prepared, I don't know. 
you know, you're, you're the first dentist to see a child, they're always okay, aren't they? If you're the second dentist to see a child, then anything could have happened. Anything, almost certainly, more likely than not, that, that they've been put off, you know? I say that because, not because I think dentists put ch children off, but because, supposing you're the loveliest dentist in the world, right? And But you're the second dentist to see the child. What are the chances that the first dentist was also the loveliest dentist in the world? You know, to see two of the loveliest dentists in the world, pretty unlikely, isn't it? It's probably more likely that they've seen one mediocre one and then the loveliest one, or one shitty one and then the loveliest one. So, you know, so anything could happen. Anyway, patient number two, uh, charming lady in her late, I suppose, uh, early 70s or something, again comes in as an emergency fractured upper right six uh, distoplatal cusp absolutely standard you know has got an MOD or an or DO uh, composite in this tooth and just fractured off the distoplatal cusp clean fracture no decay no pain just a bit it feels like a lump missing you know not even complaining it's rubbing her tongue or anything so she comes in and um, doing medical history. What what are you on? Uh, I've got thyroid problems, but I take something for it. What do you take? I don't know. I can't remember. Is it thyroxin? I don't know. Do you know my mind's gone blank? I honestly, I can always remember my tablet. I don't understand this. It never happened to me before. But I've got such a good memory. I, I do know my tablets. Uh, what else? I've got diabetes. Okay. What what are you taking for that? Do you know? I don't know. My mind's gone a complete blank. So she says, I'm so sorry, and I'm like, okay, that's fine, you know, lots of people forget their drugs. So, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, that doesn't really affect what we're going to do, which is, uh, we're only, I'm only contracted to do emergency work. I'm not contracted to continue his practice while he's, while he's relocating. So, uh, I'm thinking, what, well, either leave it, smooth it, or, or, you know, push comes to shove, put like a temporary filling on it or something, you know, some chem fill or something just to bung it up temporarily. So I said to the woman, these are your, these are your three options. So, what, are you not going to fill it? Can he fill it? Do you think he can fill it? I said, I don't know what he's going to do. I said, personally, I think it needs a crown. It's, you know, oh, oh I don't want a crown. No, 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 no. Don't even think about suggesting a crown. Oh, okay. No, my husband has had crowns, but crowns, his crowns are always falling off. They're always falling off. That's the last thing I want is a crown. So, and she had this sort of attitude that, um, you know when people get drunk and they start, uh, they, they become sort of, um, you know, one half of their brain realizes that the other half is a bit drunk and they start saying things like, do you know what? I'm a bit tipsy. I've, you know, I think I've possibly had a little bit too much to drink. And she was like that permanently, you know, permanently uh, talking, and then uh, the other half of her brain, her brain trying to analyse what she just said and um, why it, it hadn't quite turned out exactly as it was intended. So anyway, I mean, obviously we fairly quickly picked up on the fact that she's almost certainly got pre-senile dementia, and she was a reason why she'd come in and wanted something done urgently is because she's going to the hospital tomorrow because she's also got macular degeneration and so she's worried about losing her eyesight although I don't know whether I mean I've got again you know reading between the lines well I don't know whether this hospital visit was under the pretense of her eyesight whereas in fact may have been intended to culminate in a test for pre-senile dementia but her husband was uh, with her, but didn't come in, didn't talk to me at all, you know, just sent his wife in. Asked, we always ask to the partners, would you like to come in? No, no, I'll, you know, that's fine. Sat out there and let me struggle with this woman who's, who's obviously got quite severe cognitive problems. And that leaves you then with the issue of whether or not he's aware that she's got cognitive problems because sometimes as a third party you can see things and obviously you've got experience at seeing a lot of things and so you can put people in the old medical boxes can't you quite quickly i'm not saying that she had pre-senile dementia or you know or alzheimer's or whatever or 
she may just have been uh, had a brain fart you know I'm not, I'm not diagnosing her condition all I'm saying is that I had a conundrum at the end of it of whether to say to him look you know is has she been assessed for a pre-senile dementia and should I as a dentist you know <laughs> I mean, I've, you know, you're supposed to pick up other things, aren't you? The, the papers are full every year of stories of a dentist, my dentist spotted my malignant melanoma, or my dentist spotted this, my dentist spotted that. And, uh, you know, there we are, my dentist yesterday spotted, um, uh, spotted my pre-senile dementia. But, you know, what do you do? I mean, I, again, she's not my patient, other people far more experienced and uh, cognizant of her problems than I, I presume, are dealing with her, and she's not in any immediate danger or anything. So, so that was just, you know, but it all adds up, doesn't it? It all adds up. When I took my brief hiatus from the profession, I said always it took me three months to de stress, and it doesn't take you three months to stress up, I tell you. It takes you, you know takes you about a week <laughs> to, to add on enough stress to require three months de to detoxify you. I don't know, police are blocking around about off, what the hell's going on there, something's going on down there. So anyway, yeah. And you've, you'll have your own examples, you know, I mean you'll know, you'll, you'll have your own examples of patients like this. She said to me, I don't want a crown, she said, I want the teeth that God gave me. Like a crown is a devil's work. <laughs> I thought, I thought, God's just broken your tooth, okay? You had a, you had a, a decent tooth and God broke it. God's trying to tell you to have a crown. He's even broken your tooth to try and give you a hint that you need a crown. So, but you're not listening, are you? You're not listening to God. God's God telling me that you need a crown. He's telling me to tell you you need a crown. He's even telling you if you'd only listen. But you're not listening. <laughs> but you can't do that. You cannot do that to patients, can you? You can't when they start going on about God's will. You mustn't argue with them. <laughs> you mustn't tell them that they've got God's will slightly wrong. Oh dear. Anyway, uh, I, put a, I put a glass of anima on it for her and told her that she needed to keep her mouth open for about two hours before it's let it set. So, at least that'll give her husband a couple of hours peace and quiet. So what else? Oh yeah, accounts. My accounts went through with the UNW. I use Alan Suggett, Dentist to the Dental Stars, and uh, had like a quite an interesting one-hour conversation on the phone with him. Um, and he reminded me of a few things, which I think are just the, the very basics, okay, which caught me out when I was a young dentist. And let me just take you through a few of the basics, okay? Now, I've set up as a limited company, so I return, I have two sets of accounts to put in. One for the company and one for my own personal income. So that's the income that I draw out of the company, you know, out of the practice. So the um, the personal side of things is quite easy. The, the new tax year starts on the 6th of April. And so you have to account for all your income and I am not an accountant, okay? If this is wrong, and if Alan, if you're listening to this, if this is wrong, I do apologise. Please do correct me. But I think I'm right. I'm going to stick to the very, very basics. So all the income you've earned up to, and including the 5th of April, which I can never get that right because I always think the 4th of April is the end of the last day of the last tax year and the 5th is the first day. The 6th is the first day of the new tax year. The 5th is the last day of the old tax year. And then what happens is they, they now have this what I think, quite frankly, is a ridiculous system where you have to pay tax in year before you even know how much tax you're due to pay, okay? So my, ne my next tax year will be 17-18, uh, which will finish in April 18. And the tax due on that will be due on the 1st of... Oh God, now, oh, no, this is the trouble. We're trying to do it off the top of your head, isn't it? 
Your tax is due in two instalments, one on the 1st of January and one, one and a balancing payment on the 1st of July. And then if you, uh, then when you've done the annual accounts, you calculate that you have underpaid or overpaid, then there's a balancing payment which coincides with the, with the first instalment date of the 1st of January, right? So on 1st of January, you've got two payments to make. You've got the first half of your tax for the next year and the balancing payment for last year. And in, on the, the 1st of July, you've basically you've got the second half of the payment for the, for the, for the year. So, and this can, does catch people out. And the way it catches people out is this. If in a year, let's say your taxable, you know, your tax to pay is £10,000, then you have to pay, as you'd expect, £5,000 in January and £5,000 in, in July. Now, the trouble is, in January, you actually won't even know how much tax you're supposed to pay because the tax year hasn't ended yet. It doesn't end till 5th of April. So how much do you know how to pay on the 1st of January if you don't know what your, how much tax you need to pay? And the answer is that they just say, well, pay the last, same as last year, just pay the same as last year. On the basis that, you know, what happened last year is likely to happen this year. We don't mind if you pay the same as last year and then uh, the second on July when you possibly will know how much tax. I mean, but you'd have to be like red hot, wouldn't you? Because you'd have to have the accounts that have to be closed on the 5th of April, sent off to the accountant and all your account tax and everything calculated and everything by in, uh, they've got May and June really to do that for everybody and then it doesn't matter anyway because the 1st of July really is just a repeat of the 1st of January payment. So, so basically, in the same way as your, you know, nobody, universities don't look at people's A-levels anymore because the A-level results come too late for the universities to change their offers. They, they all need to have interviewed everybody and made their offers by the time anyone takes their A-levels. So what do they do? They look at the results from the year before, you know, the first year. The interim results, so you get into university not based on your A-levels, but based on your interim results after your first year. So, in January you can't possibly know how much tax you have to pay. And this other stupid rule which says that basically you can pay, or not elect to pay, but I mean you, 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 are, you will be asked or expected to pay pretty much what you earned the year before means that you can get yourself into a tremendous mess and the biggest mess you can get yourself into is to have absolutely no tax payable let's say in year one and then loads of tax payable in year two which with a new business is something that you are likely to have you know pretty much no no profit in year one but reasonable profit in year two so that means in year one January and July you pay nothing and the following January balancing payment nothing okay and then in, in year two, what do the Inland Revenue expect you to pay? Nothing, because you paid nothing last year. So in year two, January and July, you pay nothing, okay? And then the problem comes with the balancing payment for year three. The first instalment of year three and the balancing payment for year two. Now, in, by the balancing payment point, first of January, your, the accountant will have told you because your tax year, you know, your April tax year will have closed eight months prior. You'll know that you've got to pay some tax. So what will have happened is, let's say he says you've got to pay twenty thousand pounds in tax. So <clears throat> that tax will have to be paid as a balancing payment because remember you've paid nothing in January or July because you paid nothing in January and July the year before and you know, you're totally fine about that don't want anything off you we don't think you're a taxpayer oops oh yes you are so now balancing payment 1st of January £20,000 and the um, uh, in other words one whole tax year and so you don't split it 10 and 10 no it's £20,000 lump sum 1st of January and then what they're going to say is, <clears throat> okay, on, based on our previous year rule, <clears throat> we're going to expect you to earn £20,000 this year. Not, you know, don't care that your tax year hasn't finished yet. Don't care that you're, you may once again make no money. <laughs> Unlikely, but I mean possible. So what we'll do is we'll have uh, the first instalment of year three will make half of what you now admit you were uh, obligated to pay in year two. That's another 10,000. 
So 1st of January in year three, you're paying 20,000 in one lump plus half again. So effectively you pay 150% of your tax bill on a single day, which is the January the 1st in year three. Now, okay, I mean, fair enough, you've got away with not paying anything in year one, but you should do because you had no taxable profits. Uh, what you have done is you've managed to defer your tax, to the payment of tax, from 1st of January, 1st of July in year two to 1st of January in year three. So you've you've had sort of 10,000 and 20,000 pounds on an interest-free credit <laughs> for just 12 or six months, or you know, respectively. But the, um, and you might say, well, look, supposing I know, or, you know, supposing I want to make provision for my tax to be uh, 20,000. Supposing in year two, I decide that I'm gonna make a payment on account for 10 and then another 10 or even five or something, you know, just so so that in 1st of January year three, I can sort of at least know. I've cleared a bit of the debt, so I've got less to find in one lump sum, but the Inland Revenue don't, doesn't really have a provision for that. They don't, and my advice to you is not to pay the Inland Revenue. Because at one point we got into um, at one point we got into a dispute with the Inland Revenue over the PAYE for the Dental Practitioners Association employees, and um, they were constantly writing, and, and we had a big argument about how much we owed them, and it was less than ten thousand pounds, but it was just like um, you know we just couldn't get it, we couldn't agree on exactly how much was owed, so. And I think it was at a time when the subscriptions just came in in a lump. And so I just paid them a lump sum of £10,000. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to pay you £10,000 on account. Now you can just shut up and stop writing me letters and we'll sort out exactly how much we owe you later. And, um, and we had the devil's own job trying to get that money back or the, the part of it which we, we weren't due to pay. And you know the argument they used, which was that we wouldn't have paid it to them unless we knew that we owed it, right? They said, we are going to regard you as having admitted that you owe this sum, even though you, you know, <laughs> we can't we can't explain how you owe it. And obviously you are not going to explain, but you probably do know how you owe it, but you're not going to tell us. So we're not going to refund it. And the buggers never refunded it. We just we just ended up uh, we stopped paying. We just stopped paying again <laughs> till we were back in credit. <laughs> they will not refund it. So do not pay in advance, okay? But remember that trap, the January January first year three trap, okay? For all new businesses.